which had natural selection was your first feature and you had started a you started with a short film um that grew into this feature what was what was that process like from the short film being completed to making a feature and releasing a feature on netflix yeah so the difficult thing about features obviously is now they're they're long you know now now you have you know 90 minutes to elaborate on whatever story you're telling so there's a lot more responsibility put on you because you know not only do you are you you know undertaking the task of of writing a story but is it an interesting story does it have interesting characters you know it's not 12 minutes 15 minutes where people can just sit through it and if they get kind of bored then they'll still finish it out you know like can you keep your audience's attention long enough you know to, to, to take them through the whole the whole journey so you know natural selection started as a my senior thesis in film school and I believe it was it's kind of weird because it, I think it was 22 minutes long Okay. So it's been like the longest short I've ever done since then, but obviously in hindsight definitely could have trimmed it down a little bit, but um but yeah, it started as the short and got a lot of good feedback from it. I think the way I did it, which I think how most shorts are made, you know, you introduce some characters, you introduce a little bit of the story and then you leave like leave it off as on a cliffhanger so people are interested in seeing more of it. Hmm. Or they want to see where this goes, so it was you know and uh, so taking that you know I had to d develop develop the characters, develop the story. You know where was it going to go? How was it going to start? And you know you mentioned you're writing a feature film now, so it's it's difficult to to to, to figure out those pieces going into it. You know like what's the most important thing to focus on? You know um, if there's one thing I learned from natural selection or just any kind of film that I've done it in the past it's you know every minute on screen should count for something and there should never be anything on screen that doesn't mean something or doesn't go somewhere right because you know the last thing you want to do is film a scene or put something in the frame that looks cool but it doesn't go anywhere yeah you don't want it to be hollow yeah and and I think a lot of a lot of things nowadays it's structured as this happens, then this happens, then this happens, and that doesn't hold anyone's attention. You know, it, movies can't just be this this scene, this scene, this scene, this scene. This scene happens, which something happens at the end of it, which causes this to happen, and now we lead into the next area, and then something else happens, causing this to happen, and then now we're going on a journey. Now we're taking the audience, and now the audience is interested to see what's happening. There's yeah. cause yeah. and effect. Yeah, you need so. that chain of causation. Um, linking everything, but also you've got the the underlying story, the character story, um, that everything else should link to. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I always thought that in college, writing a feature would be extremely difficult, which it absolutely is. I mean, I'm I'm still having issues trying to trying to, you know. I've written screenplays, which I'm sure you have, but you write stuff and then you kind of put it aside yeah. and then it kind of sits there and then you kind of come back to it. You never really, I haven't, it's hard to really sit and see something through over and over again. So, um, so yeah, I just, I just try to develop, try to find the pieces that were the most important to me and elaborate on those and just kind of build from there. And so that's kind of how the, the short got transitioned into a screenplay. But, you know, looking back at it, I would have, I would have, it would have been written differently, it would have been focused on different points, and I definitely probably would have spent more time sending out to more people to look at. Yeah, From the, yeah. Screen, the screenplay. So how did you go from completed short film, which um, went on a festival circuit, um, you won any awards from that? Yeah, it got, uh, won a few awards here and there, but, you know, I feel like unless you get into Sundance or, or South by Southwest or I mean, even if you get into those festivals, you still have to win it to really to, to, to really have play. any kind of national or worldwide massive. acclaim. Exactly. Right. But, you well, know, winning awards um, definitely gives you some leeway when you're talking to people who may want to invest. Um, so what was your process of raising money for this short? Uh, because you cannot pay actors in pizza for a feature film. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing, the thing now, which the... 
the film the film industry and the way movies are made and the, the way they're they're marketed and how to get stuff it's it's dramatically changed since when I made Natural Selection. I mean, we live in a world now where you're either with the big guys in Hollywood that have the massive budgets and they're just throwing money around, or you got to find a way to make a feature, a good feature for almost no money, because yeah. Yeah. it's really difficult to find anybody who a wants to buy it for any kind of you know, decent amount of money. Uh, obviously, once you make your film, getting it dis- distributed is the second hurdle. You know, some people can make a movie, but they can't get it out there. And where and what I've noticed with Netflix and Amazon and all these major streaming platforms is now they're at a position where they're they're big enough that they make they want to make their own content and they want the best content. Right. So. You know, back in 2015-ish when I sold Natural Selection to Netflix, nowadays it's more difficult to do that because now Netflix, you know, they're, they're so big that they, they, want to, they, want this, they want to do their own stuff. They want to do their things. So it's harder to, to solicit and have them pick up other people's material, you know. They, they want their own stuff and they want to produce their own stuff, so... Um, but to go back to your question about getting getting it made, there is no blue, blueprint for how to do it. It's really difficult. You pretty much just got to find people that believe in you and have extra funds to – to because there are people out there who have a lot of money that love just being a part of the arts. They love to be a part of stuff and most people that aren't in the industry just – feel it really it's an interesting and fun thing to be a part of a movie like even that even if they didn't participate in the production of it they they feel they feel cool they're like oh i made them like i i produced a movie or right i executive produced a film like it makes them feel good so um so yeah i just you know the short was a nice little uh credential that i had that i could show people what i was looking to do um another important thing that i think when you're when you're looking for money for a film is if your film has some kind of a, um, like a, a message or something behind it that that has something good to promote from it, sure. so you, it might be different that if you want to just make a slasher movie that just involves people getting cut up for ninety minutes, that's going to be maybe a little bit harder to pitch somebody than if you had a film that's a thriller or a drama that deals with like an issue hmm. that the characters are dealing with, but it also has a positive message in it. So it can reach out and hopefully, you know, help people, you know. So when I was going around pitching down selection, like that's how I did it. I was mm-hmm. saying how it's about, you know, love overcoming hate. It's about finding the strength within yourself to overcome adversity, even though you're faced up against the world. Like that's what the, the film's about. And it, and, it, and it has a positive uh, message in it and conclusion in it, I think. And that was helpful in getting people motivated and, and passionate behind the project was pitching it like there was a, a message to it that was going to um, you know transcend from the film into the world and, and hopefully help people so right that right. so you, when you have that going for your film yeah I was, and you use the word right there I was gonna say to, to pitch something that really transcends just the project is yeah. huge because like you said there are people with money who want to be involved in the process well there are also people with money who have certain feelings and want to pursue certain themes and get that out in the world and to create content that is hopeful exactly okay. so that that's always helpful too when you're constructing your film or thinking about doing a certain project that that, that gives you a little bit of some leeway with when you get to the point of pitching it around to try to raise money for it. Okay, great. And you also had a name actor in Natural Selection, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah, uh, that was inter- the whole the whole casting part was really interesting too because there were a couple characters actors that came on board like the last second. Um, I think my my uh, production attorney. I believe he was the one that got us Anthony Michael Hall. So he he sent him the script because they were like, okay, well, I can send it to him and see what he does, see what he says. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And then like two days later, uh, my producer called me and goes, 
Anthony Michael Hall usually doesn't work with first time directors, but he wants to have a conversation with you. And so that was kind of nerve wracking. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> he's like, he's going to call you tomorrow at like 5 p.m. I said, okay. So but that conversation went really well. And, you know, he was, he was great to work with. He's also a great person. So he and I are good friends. And he genuinely cares about, you know, the project. He cares about, you know, we, we stay in communication very often. And nice. whenever I'm with him and, you know, we're in, we're in groups or companies, like he always has something nice to, he's always, uh, he's a firm believer in, in the project and a firm believer is me as a filmmaker. So that, that goes a long way. Like, I really appreciate that. Sure. And, uh, you know, and also it's Anthony Michael Hall, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's so, terrific, after, man. And um, yeah. how how instrumental would you say having him as a name actor um, into getting the film made? Like, how did that translate? Did you did you feel like you need that, or once you got that, did that loosen up a couple things? Right. The it's a great question. I think that's a question that a lot of people. Once again, there's no blueprint for it. There's no there's no right or wrong answer for it. It definitely got attention, you know, when we had his name on the project. It, it, it adds a lot of credibility to the film. Um, got us a lot of interest. Um, it was a having him in the project was def definitely a huge um, boost for us. And but you know, but as, that aside, just just looking at the younger actors in my film, you know, things are subject to change all the time. Like Catherine McNamara at the time, who plays Paige in Natural Selection. You know, she she was out there. She was doing this and doing that, and but nowadays she's kind of in a she's kind of a big big actor now on on network television. You know, she was in that Shadow Shadow Hunter series mm -hmm. um, for a while. That, that gave her a huge boost on Freeform, and then now she's on a she was on Arrow. Okay. For 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 a while, and now she's getting her own uh, spinoff show that focuses on the women from arrow like the little oh. i don't watch that show but um yeah i, so I watched the first couple seasons it is interesting yeah yeah so there's a couple characters female characters that are whatever and, and now they're doing a spin-off show with just the female characters so you know she's doing really well that's great and the point being is that you know you could have an actor that you know what no one really knew about and you made the film and then a couple years later they're like an a-lister or something like that so sure. You know, and then now your film is like almost has like a second revival. You know, like oh wow, now I got this person on me. So it's interesting how that can change. But to to answer your original question, having Anthony Michael Hall in the film definitely was a huge asset to have. And not only that, you know, he he, I got a great friendship out of it. You know, the one thing that I can really appreciate and and I'm grateful for is that you know a lot of people show up, actors they'll just show up, get paid, do their job, and then they just leave. And they kind of just come and go, but the one thing that I really am uh, grateful for from National Selection was I met the, all the cast. Almost is, you know, I'm still in communication with them very often, and you know they're great people. And and it also is helpful too because now you know down the road if you if I have another film or whatever and the roles the, the roles right I can just call them, you know, right? I can just text them and say hey I don't have to I can I don't I can circumvent the agents and all that kind of stuff. I don't need to, <laughs> Don't need to try to like get through those walls. Just go right to the source. So that's always helpful too if you can get somebody in your movie and then later on down the road use them in something else. Right. Hmm. Yeah. 